Hello there everyone, today's video we're talking about tax planning, specifically EIS, Enterprise Investment Scheme. So let's say uh, you've got a tax bill that's coming up, January 31st is the deadline to pay the balance of income tax that you owe for the year ended 5th of April 2022. Now, it's also when the first payment on account for the 2023 tax year is due, but just ignoring that for one moment and looking at the first element, the balancing payment for the 2022 tax year, that's due 31st of January. Now, is there anything you can do about it to reduce it? Well, there is something that you can do, even though we're nearly uh, nine months past the end of the tax year. This particular video, we're going to talk about one of the things that you can do. It's invest in an EIS investment. Now, these things have been around for about 30 years and the government brought them in to encourage people to invest in smaller startup businesses, not necessarily FTSE 100 companies, but on the other end of the scale, uh, smaller, riskier businesses. And hence the word riskier. That's why there are tax breaks associated with them. So the government said, look, for taking on this extra investment risk, we're going to give you basically, uh, tax breaks for doing so. And one of the tax breaks is an income tax credit. So let's just assume that you are a taxpayer, you've got an income tax bill for 2022 tax year to settle in Jan 23 of, let's say it's £10,000. Now then, if you invested right now in one of these EIS investments, HMRC say, look, you can treat that investment as if it had has actually happened in the previous tax year, i.e. the 22 tax year, the tax bill for which you're about to pay. So continuing with this example of 10 grand, assume you did a £30,000 investment into this EIS. The tax rules say you get a 30% credit of that investment against your income tax bill. So 30000 invested in one of these things will knock 10 grand off your tax bill and you elect to have done it as if you'd done it before 5th of April 22, not end of December 22. So lo and behold, you make one of these investments and you don't have to pay your tax bill. It wipes out the tax bill in January. Now, remember, I'm not giving investment advice here. I'm just saying these are, these are the rules. So you've got to look out for these particular types of EIS investments, but they're across all sorts of things. Because like I said, they are deemed as a family of investments to be riskier, hence that's why you're getting the tax breaks. But the investment risk is minimized by fund managers who, who look after these things, not just investing in a single company, but in multiple companies. In theory, you can invest in single companies, but often people will do it with a basket of companies, spreads the, uh, minimizes the investment risk, um, but you need to speak to a financial advisor about that. But they're in all sorts of sectors, um, ranging from renewable energies to certain um, property investments, um, retail, all sorts of things. So, again, you would uh, you would basically uh, decide on on your your which investments are right for you. But basically, the rules say that you have thirty percent of whatever you put in coming off your income tax bill. Now, what else? So you also get capital gains tax breaks. So let's assume in that example, you put in 30 grand and after five years, you've doubled your money and the 30 grand has gone to 60 grand and you sell the investment in this EIS investment. That 30 grand capital gain is tax-free. So normally capital gains, you get the first 12,300 tax-free, which is going to come down, by the way, one of the announcements in the recent budget, um, that's coming right down, 6000 and 3000 But anyway, right now, you'd get 12000 tax-free, and then anything else, you pay capital gains tax on. So with an EIS investment, you don't have to pay capital gains on any gain that you've made. Making the best of a bad situation, then, would be if you made a loss. So what if you did make a loss? Remember, these family of investments are deemed to be riskier, that's why you're getting the tax break. So what if it did tank and you made a loss? Well, that capital loss that you would make, let's say in this case, it went from 30 grand to zero, that 30 grand of loss, you can set off against your income tax bill minus the uh, upfront income tax relief that you've had in the year of the loss. So basically, EIS uh, losses, you can set against, against income tax uh 
when the, the loss accrues, normally for capital losses, they're only set off against other capital gains. So just something to, to think about there, EIS investments, enterprise investment schemes, there are very certain rules that you've got to adhere to, as you can imagine with anything where there's a tax break, like you have to hold the investments for a minimum of three years. If you pull out early HMRC, claw back the upfront income tax relief. Um, but over the years, the, the people who have... Um, looked after these have got a reasonable track record obviously past performance is not an indicator of uh, future investment gains but you know you can go in and see uh, how these things have performed over time and uh, from a a tax point of view it's it's certainly worth considering especially like i said if you've got an income tax bill coming up that you need to pay for last year and you can elect for this investment now to have occurred as if hypothetically it had occurred before the 5th of April. So uh, if you like this video, please do subscribe. And as always, I'll see you soon.